We're back with part three. What are we gonna talk about in part three? First off, let's talk about our cat shirts. Mine's attacking a ship. Megas has glasses. Like big bifocals. Oh boy, oh. again. This video is all about the things we've learned in the past two years of doing keto. 10 of them, or maybe a little 11. more, 11 of them. And if you guys are new to our channel, this is our YouTube channel, Keto Connect. We also have a food blog, ketoconnect.net. Don't get confused and go to .com. I was too cheap to pay for the .com domain name. And this is the third video in a series of four, four. on the ultimate guide to start a keto diet. And we have a podcast, Keto for Normies. So this one, let's jump into it. 11 things we've learned in the past two years about a keto diet. There is no one size fits all. The keto diet is like a framework. Think of it like that. Like this is kind of a starting point. Work within the general guidelines of keto to find something that works well for you. Um, you know, we're all human beings. I would say a keto diet is gonna work for most people. But within that, certain things are going to work better for certain people. Like everyone has little intolerances and stuff. Right. You got to figure those out. And it actually becomes much easier to figure that out the longer you're doing keto. You just become like more in tune with all that stuff. Your keto diet compared to everyone else's will probably look at least slightly different. Different sensitivities, different rules, different meal times. Continuous improvement is crucial in all areas of life, particularly your diet. You really like, we've improved our diet so much over the course of two years. So if you just view it in more of a long-term timeline, like if you're just starting keto right now, don't worry too much about eating, you know, if you still need to have like Quest bars all the time, things like right. that eventually you'll get over that and you'll just start wanting to feel really good so you'll eat accordingly. Meal timing, this is huge. We've played with so many different meal times to find what works best for us. There's, you're gonna hear a lot about intermittent fasting, you're gonna hear about a four hour eating window, eight hour eating window, and then some people don't have any eating window at all. Like right now, we don't even practice intermittent fasting. It doesn't work best for us. It's probably the easiest adjustment you can make that will have the highest impact on just like the amount of foods you're eating. Like when you really nail it with the meal timing, you'll know, and it takes some experimenting, a lot of people want to jump into the intermittent fasting. You don't eat until noon. That's pretty good. It works for a lot of people because a lot of people aren't hungry when they wake up in the morning. Right. If you are though, maybe you want to try eating when you wake up. You want to just adjust this a lot and eventually land on something that works for you. For us, I think we found something pretty good, but you know, when I was doing intermittent fasting like a year ago, I also thought I was doing something pretty good. So you're always getting better. Right now we eat when we wake up or relatively close to when we wake up and we stop eating four hours before we lay down. Right, and for me, the ticket to knowing that I've hit a sweet spot in my eating window is that I'm not thinking about food constantly. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not prepping for my next meal or I'm not waiting to eat and waiting till 12, my eating window starts, I can gorge then. I kind of just eat more intuitively. You you want to eat a little bit before you're like starving hungry yeah. and when I was doing intermittent fasting not eating till noon I was usually like pretty starving Same. at that point I think it works a little bit better if you eat before the extreme hunger hits the foods you eat really come into play and dictate how you feel that day and the day after and the day after so if you're eating quest bars you're gonna feel like a quest bar when you're first starting out you're probably thinking like i want to eat a bunch of things that taste pretty good and will help me lose weight how you feel isn't really in that equation too much for most people making it more about how you feel makes it easier because you just really start eating better then especially on a keto diet i've become more aware of food sensitivities i have and I'm able to either eat those less or take those out completely and my, my diet is definitely affected and I just feel better day to day. It's actually incredible how much more sensitive you become to things on yeah. keto. And even if you don't feel like you are sensitive to something, maybe for you example, be. dairy, because you just love cheese so much, you love sour cream, you don't want to cut it out. We highly recommend even for like a week, two week, a month period, testing it out. Cut it out of your, cut it out of your diet and then when you reintroduce it, Compare how you feel on both ends and you'll kind of get a good gauge of whether you have a sensitivity to that certain food or not. Yeah, so remember how you felt when you were doing a high carb diet? You probably thought you were feeling okay, right? You're feeling pretty good every day. Yeah. Then you take out all the carbs and you're like, whoa, now I feel really good. There's like other levels to that even yeah. still. Like if you take out dairy, if you have a severe dairy intolerance, you might not even really know it that much. Right. You take it out and you could feel completely different. All these things are worth trying. For me, veggies are a big thing. So cauliflower. Certain veggies. I'm yeah. just, I'm totally out on because they make me feel extremely bloated. I have a lot of discomfort. And the next day I even feel and look physically worse. Less carbs, more fat. 
Yes, this is kind of two things. The less carbs, the better, I would say. If you have never really limited carbs to the extreme, try it. It's, it helps a lot, it helps us a lot. And then more fat. There's a, a lot of people will tell you, if you're eating fat in your diet, you won't be burning fat off your body. Even people doing keto say that. I think that's really dumb. I think you should be eating a lot of fat. No. Eat fat until you're full. But fat is what makes you feel good when yeah. you're doing keto because that's yeah. where your energy comes from. Yeah. So you want to be getting like a pretty good quantity of fat in. Maybe your weight loss short term won't be as extreme and stuff, but it'll be more sustainable and you'll just feel better and it'll be more of a long term right. life change. You'll feel healthier. You'll feel better, which matters more. So there's definitely two sects of people within keto. Some that say limit your fat to lose more weight. I would not be in that camp. I would say, eat more fat, you'll feel better, and in the long term, you'll lose weight anyway, just because you're, you're healing your body. We've found that staying keto while on vacation, while you're out maybe all day with the family, with the kids, it's totally possible to stay keto. There's always an option out there in terms of fast food, and when you're out at restaurants, don't be embarrassed or scared to ask for substitutes. You're paying for the food, make it fit your lifestyle. So when I used to go, when I was first starting keto, I was very like kind of nervous and like worried about what I'm gonna order. I would say just dial it back a little bit. Like don't worry so much. If you get something, you taste it, it tastes like kind of sweet or something, maybe like scrape the sauce off of it. You don't have to be in ketosis 24 seven. Like you can have a nice night out and there's levels to this. Like if you just have a salad dressing that maybe is like a raspberry vinaigrette, like there's, there's maybe like 10 grams of sugar in there or something and it's all over your nice expensive salad you got. Yeah, that's not gonna set you back as far as having the bread basket will, right? So getting kicked out of ketosis is not a black and white thing. Like you're in or you're out. There's levels to the whole things. And something we also don't do after something like that happens is think about it, be mad and, and be upset. And 24 hour fast. And like try to recover from it. There is no way to recover. Just get right back on track and let the past be the past, Let's guys. throw in an extra tip. Go ahead. When you cheat or when you break your diet, you should not be doing the cycle of like fasting or doing extreme tactics. It's not a you good got, cycle. You got to address the root cause of why that happened in the first place. Right. And I think you should just go right back to eating keto foods the next day, normal day of eating. Don't limit your calories. Don't do anything. You can't get it back. You just have to prevent it from happening again. And even when you're first starting, like you go a week and then you have a cheat by accident. You didn't want to cheat, but you just did it. Then the next time you might go two weeks. This is all progress. You got to think in terms of progress, not in terms of good and bad. Electrolytes are pretty much the key to everything. 95% of the symptoms you're going to be having when you start keto is going to be electrolyte related. Fatigue, weakness, tired. If you're not feeling headache. quite right when you're doing keto, it's almost always electrolytes. Obviously, there's, there's exceptions to this, but it's potassium, sodium, magnesium. Those are the things you need to supplement if you're feeling suboptimal. So get your electrolytes. At least have like a plan. You want to have electrolytes at your house that you can go to when you're feeling low energy. Be open-minded to different approaches to a keto lifestyle. So we've had a lot of different people on our podcast who do keto, a keto diet very different ways. And none of them are wrong. We take what we think will fit to our lifestyle and we, uh, we um, apply it, right? Being open to different approaches will just allow you to explore more, experiment more, and find success in your particular way. So at this point, I think I've realized that you never really have it figured out. So like what we were doing a year ago, as far as our diet goes, we thought was awesome. And we've, we pretty much thought we had it figured out, but now we're doing something completely different. It's easy to be very judgy of like what other people are doing because you think you got it so well figured out, but you're probably going to evolve your thoughts in the future. So just be conscious of that. And don't be judgy. That's yeah, just a life judging. tip. So we've done cyclical keto diet. We've done targeted keto diet. We've done intermittent fasting. We've done like different types of fast, egg fast, fat fast. Some things that being open-minded helped us with. Not doing intermittent fasting because everyone on the internet says it's amazing and it's, it's the best, best thing ever for you. <laughs> Maybe you don't need to do it or just experiment and see what works best for you. Not eating vegetables. Every single person will tell you vegetables are the most integral part of life. Every single article you read. But if you're open-minded to maybe, hey, I'm going to go a month without eating a single vegetable. Let's see what happens. We did yeah. that and we were we fine. We felt great. We felt even better than eating vegetables. Right. So just be open-minded to all possibilities. 
Don't limit yourself. Focus on how you feel and you'll get the best results. So don't worry about the, read, the ketone meter reading every single morning, the scale weight every single morning. Chasing those numbers will just stress you out, will make you feel worse about the progress you've made and make you feel like you know this diet isn't working for you. Yeah, it's way easier when you start thinking about how you feel and then everything kind of follows that. If you're feeling really good every day, isn't that what's most important? Your body will reflect how you feel eventually. So instead of just thinking all about weight loss all the time, if that's what you're going for, think about how you feel. Having less rules overall. So many people doing keto have a lot of rules. You know, eating window is a big one. You can't have soda, right? No soda. I mean, you should probably have some rules what you what you think is like appropriate for a diet, but like I have a rule no soda kind of, but if I go out to dinner, maybe I'll have a diet soda. And I find that restricting myself completely, um, especially when I'm just telling myself over and over I can't have that, not only makes me want it more, but makes me stress about the fact that I can't have it. So just not having those rules and those constraints put on your life will just allow you to just be more intuitive. Yeah, I think the ideal for most people is just to be able to go throughout their day not really stressing too much about what they're eating, eating intuitively like, oh, I'm hungry now, I'll eat. Right. When you have a lot of these rules, it gets you back to more of like an addictive behavior. Like especially with intermittent fasting, when you have such a hard rule like no eating before 12. What if you're hungry before 12 one day? I think you should eat. And then even with um, your macro uh, ratio or the calories you set for yourself, if you're hungrier one day and you've also worked out or even if you haven't worked out, like don't feel bad to eat more. Like if you're keeping it keto, if you're keeping your carbs low, Eating at a surplus of calories when you're staying keto isn't a bad thing. We actually do that time to time. That's the big 11. Those are 11 things we learned in the past two years of doing keto. That we think will help you on your journey. Video four is gonna be on YouTube tomorrow. If you wanna watch it right now, like always, you can click on the Steam It link in the description and you get taken to a new place where we're posting our videos. It's called Steam It. You get the videos one day ahead of time. You don't have to pay or anything. We'll see you guys tomorrow for video four. Thank you.